Greetings. This is an important earthquake watch for August 23 through to August 27. We also receive a considerable amount of shaking in the Vanuatu region after the seven magnitude earthquakes that were registered this time yesterday. With recent solar observations and telemetry, there is a likelihood of a larger earthquake could be possible during this watch. We're now looking at the latest telemetry from ACE, where we get to see subtle changes in solar wind speeds over the last 24 hours, where solar winds were at 350 kilometers a second, slowly moving up towards 400 during the day. During the same time frame, density has started to increase, and also some sporadic movements in temperature. This could be an indication that we are starting to receive the coronal hole speed stream from the coronal hole in the southern hemisphere. We're now looking at the Hanode XRT with solar monitor, and we get to see two large coronal hole formations that could produce powerful earthquakes during this watch. But the main area of focus is this coronal hole formation that's located in the southern hemisphere, and that's situated at 23 to 35 degrees south latitude. And I do feel that like this could produce a fairly powerful earthquake, possibly 7.7 in magnitude, on either August 23 or August 24. We also have an emergence of an active region that's sitting at around 18 degrees south latitude that has doubled in size over the last 24 hours, and that further supports the theory of a fairly powerful earthquake for the southern hemisphere. There's also a trans-equatorial coronal hole that's located just above the equator that could also produce a significant earthquake, and this could be around August 26 to August 27 timeframe. It is expected over the next 24 to 48 hours, we may be receiving significant rise in solar wind speeds due to the arrival of the coronal hole speed stream as seen in the image. Coronal hole speed streams are expected to hit the Earth's magnetic field on August the 23rd and August the 24th. And there may be a collision in solar wind streams which could produce a seismic shock, and that's the main reason for this earthquake watch. We're now looking at the SD0193 angstrom are having a close-up view of this coronal hole in the southern hemisphere. Now we do see some movement at the bottom corner of this coronal hole around 33 to 35 degrees south latitude and that'll be the main area that I'll be focusing on. There's also an active region that opened and closed quite quickly at the base of this coronal hole around 36 degrees which further supports this. Now using the SDO 304 angstrom we get to see this coronal hole in the southern hemisphere is decaying quite rapidly. That's an indication that we're not too far away from receiving this event perhaps over the next 24 to 36 hours. Looking ahead at this other coronal hole, it's not showing a lot of activity, but it is decaying quickly, so that's an indication that we may be receiving a significant earthquake also from this region as well. I'm going to be plotting some areas I feel could be at risk for a significant earthquake during this watch, and for the time frame of August 23 to August 24, and the most likely areas that could be at risk for a significant event, possibly 7.7 in magnitude, could be the regions of Bio Bio, Chile, stretching up towards Valparaiso in Chile. And my second area of concern is for the Kamatic Islands, New Zealand, stretching to the offshore New Zealand region. In and around this fault line would be the second area of most concern. And my third area of concern is for the region of Christchurch, New Zealand. Although Christchurch, New Zealand is at 43 degrees in latitude, I do feel that there is some symmetry between some coronal holes that were spotted in September 2010 and also today. We'll get into this now. Now looking at solar images, a week prior to the 7.1 magnitude earthquake that struck Christchurch, New Zealand in 2010, we get to see a significant coronal hole formation deep down in the southern hemisphere, and a fairly powerful one. If we have a look at recent observations and imagery, we get to see a much larger coronal hole formation that seems to be over the same region, which is of most concern. And I have spent the last 24 hours researching this, and I have been quite concerned with the images that we are looking at. Now looking at the active regions on the solar corona, we get to see that they're situated at 18 and 19 degrees south latitude. So if we use these as a temporal marker, this coronal hole formation only gets to 36 degrees in latitude. So the question is, how can a coronal hole, which only goes to 36 degrees in latitude, affect New Zealand, which is located at 43? And it would be quite easy to rule out the earthquake for Christchurch, New Zealand, based on this information. But I have spent quite a few hours in research and I come up with a conclusion or a possibility that may give the region of New Zealand a fairly large earthquake. I now have a split screen showing the symmetry between both coronal holes from today and also September 2010. And we get to see something quite interesting. The coronal hole in 2010 gets to 38 degrees in latitude but it does have an area underneath which encompasses the region of New Zealand and we do see an interesting upliftment on the solar corona in these imagery. We also see something quite similar. We see a much larger region underneath, which is of most concern. And there is a little bit of similarity. 
So this could produce a significant event for the region of New Zealand, even though the coronal hole doesn't reach the 43 degree latitude region. Now looking at the latest coronal hole information via Solon.info and focusing on this coronal hole region or the trans-equatorial coronal hole as indicated by this service CH472 and I've narrowed down this region to 9 to 12 degrees north latitude. I'm now going to be targeting some regions for this second coronal hole formation that will be expected to arrive around August 26 to August 27 and the main areas of concern are sitting at 9 to 12 degrees north latitude and the main areas of concern are the regions of Guam or Mariana Islands. And my second and final area of concern will be the region of El Salvador stretching down towards Costa Rica. These will be my second areas and I do feel that the second coronal hole could produce an earthquake around 6.5 in magnitude. We're now looking at the Lasco C3 feed from Soho where we're going to see the emergence of two sun diving or sun grazing comets enter the sun August the 20th. During this same time frame two significant earthquakes were recorded in the Vanuatu region both registering over 7 in magnitude. Prior to the arrival of these comets two active regions spawned on the solar corona almost simultaneously. That's an indication that these comets affected space-time in such a way where we saw the effects on the solar corona prior to them happening here on Earth. We're now looking at the outgoing long wave radiation anomaly. This is showing parts of the globe that could be susceptible of some significant seismic events based on radiation signatures and the areas that we are looking for are shaded in darkish green and the main areas this week are showing up in Hokkaido, Japan. China's got a very large signature. We also have a signature in Papua New Guinea. There's also a region in Uganda that's showing up for its first time and also underneath Madagascar. There's also a small signature at around the Newcastle region, Australia, and also the North Island of New Zealand. And there's also a fairly large signature up around the region of Canada. These are the main regions, and I feel that the main areas of concern for this week seem to be the Hokkaido, Japan region, and also in China. And that's my Volcano and Earthquake Watch for August 22, 2011. Annotations will be added during and at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.